every so often there's a cork. And the way I do it, I leave so often so that from cork to a cork, as you can see that from that cork is one, two, three, four, five. So every five of these mountains has got to be a cork. When I when I was a skipper on a boat from Jersey, that was owned by the Patricks, the fish money business. They were like the money side. I was like, as I said, we were the fishing side, so I was that skipper their boat for them. Because they wouldn't have known anything to do about that kind of thing. Us, our family, the side was actually the fishing, fishing side. We were the fishermen as such, if you want to call us. Because we made our living just fishing, so with my mum, my father, my, my uncles, my grandpa. Six generations now for the children. My father and my grandfather and our side of the family used to have like eleven foot boats and it was all done with paddles. It was so it was mostly net fishing, it was local net, net fishing and all beach fishing. In those days we weren't there was no deep, sort of what you call deep water. It was all local fishing. There was um our fishing boat was our big boats, our big fishing boats was twenty foot, twenty two foot, twenty foot, eighteen, twenty. That was the big boats for my and then as I got older and got my I, I got I got into the bigger tar fishing and of course I fished as well you know, as far as Scotland, England, English Channel, Scotland. For place from Jersey. I said Jersey registered boat. But in my young day it was all there was none of that. It was all um well, my dad brought us up uh, just up on working on the land in the winter and in the season, the potatoes and tomorrows and with mum. When I was, well, the way I got brought up from the, the occupation days, and it was lovely days when I was back. Well, much more fun. And because mum and dad, they, well, they had bad five of us children, we all still alive. She had five of us within four years, my mum. I know. <laughs> There's only 11 months between two of my sisters. So, you know, it was tough. <laughs> it was tough. Tough for them. We them, exactly. Well, look at Dad did some fishing during the occupation. Oh, he had a permit. He had a pass for the beach mm -hmm. for special times. I had to have a soldier with you, mm -hmm. other on the beach. Because we do a lot of beach fishing at night, like drawn in. And well, that's how we survived. And Dad with his fish. fish. I mean, we wouldn't have. Not a family of five children. I mean, there was no way, you know. We, we, we couldn't have survived. We always you know? had, we always had fish, yeah. yes, and sugar beet, and that sweetened everything. But we were starving. There's no two ways about it, really. We really were. Not through the fault of one's parents, but because, well, you know, even the Germans, I mean, the the officers, the, you know, the um, the Nazi ones, the, they were the horrible ones. But the German soldiers, as I call them, the German soldiers, they were starving too. We weren't the only ones. They were in a terrible state. But I do remember these Germans being so terribly, terribly hungry. And we were hungry too, and nothing to share. And one day, one of them gave me a piece of chocolate. Now, I don't know where he got the chocolate from. He was just an ordinary soldier. And they had wives and children at home. It was so sad. I mean, they were only doing a job. I'm sure they didn't want to be on our island, and you know, with no food and, and none of their home comforts, poor souls. And <coughs> Spent all the evening making sugar beet syrup. <laughs> they jarred it all up. And in the morning when they went up there, there wasn't a jar left. <laughs> they could smell it, you see. Mm. They, could smell it, they could smell it. And they, took, they never even left mum one. <laughs> you know, it wasn't all bad. But it was just, we were so very hungry. And for my poor mum and dad, it must have been terrible with us, our children. As soon as you got home, it was getting preparing nets like this, making nets at night. Oh, no. I used to help him to do it. And oh, no. So it was, my life was involved. I was interested in fishing. That's all I was interested in. I wasn't interested in the other. Five, I was actually working for him, well, helping him to catch fish when I was seven. Mm. We were doing his lunch on that rowing boat of his. Yeah. Actually, I can remember doing that. I can remember Sitting on the doing. boat with the box. I was standing there at the back yeah. and paying the ox out and then pulling yeah, it in and okay. then he fish up pass it to my dad. Was sitting in the back of he Dad's boat. And if there was any fish, I would pass it to him and he'd put his oars somehow between his arms and he would 
Well, in between his knees, I was too young to run up them. Mm. No, I, I, was, I, was, I was only, I probably was less than seven. So I know Mum was never really for it. She used to think you were too young to... Well, he couldn't do it really by himself, no. but he needed somebody was. Mm. So he didn't have to share by having me with him. No, no. You know, he was all, all, all over the table, wasn't it? We were lucky because if Dad hadn't a fish, we'd never have made it through. The occupation would be if Dad hadn't done his fishing. Well, not the way we did. No. Our boat was only small, but all rowing boats, which didn't have been when I was a young lad. Not outside now. Um, but that was the net, and it was all beach fishing. So that was we used to have what the, where the ocular was. All that wall, my dad used to put his nets. All the nets would have to be dried on the, on the wall. So that's where they hung the nets, hung over the wall. It was all like uh, all cotton. Got rope to help you. It all had to be dried before it was put away. All good rocks, you know. Oh, yeah, today, these modern ones, you could leave them in. Pools. Yeah, so the best way is leave them in a, a bin of water and let it rot, and it should all fall out when you pay that next time. Mm -hmm. The old nets had to be cleaned, they would oh, yeah. be put away with oh, weed yeah. on them. Yeah. Yeah. In, in those days, they didn't have the money to, um, to buy it, and so they used to make all their own. Everything was made. So, um, so everything was made by hand. So being a young boy, that's how I talked through my grandfather and my father who taught me. But these days, you, it's all machine made and uh, machine, you know, factory made. But by hand, I don't think be many people would know how to do that. How to uh, well, actually mend that, and I can make that. But still, okay, but he used to make them. As make in, them. He only yeah. made them at night time, didn't yeah. he? I oh, can't he, was work. Work, he was working, but uh, it, it, it used to take down three months. I remember him telling me three Eight, months. Nine, ten, eleven. Do, so it was about four hours, four hours a day. It's really marvellous to see them, you know, there. I can see his big fingers, you know, because it's all done measuring with your fingers, you know. Yeah, you know, it's the same as and that. Big, you still got your big needle that your dad, like dad, had to actually make them with. It was oh, a great big one, oh, wasn't it? The big it? ones, yeah. yeah. Do you know which are your knits? Oh, you would love it, that one. I'll do a week. I can do a rope. Two weeks, and that's just leisurely, three hours a day. Where it would come out if somebody had a brand new piece of net and they got caught up in somebody propeller, or their own propeller, or something was cut for some reason. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would put that, I could put that could net put back in a matter of an hour as well, yeah. like yeah. a matter of a day, say, for instance. That. See, there were probably a lot of older fishermen too who don't know how to do that, who would be only too pleased to know how it's done. Mm. That's all done with my brother having a stroke and he couldn't actually use that hand of his at oh, all. Right. Just lost no, all the feelings on one side. No, just lost no. No, I'm lucky, but it didn't happen to my no, face. You were very a lot happy, of people. Really. Oh, yes, but up. when you had the stroke, you couldn't, he couldn't use his hand at all. I used to give him the remote control, didn't I, George? Oh, yes. And, um,. I used to say to him, right, now you keep that in your hand and you keep, just push, keep pushing the buttons. And you know, in the end, you managed to change the programs on the television, didn't you? Strength on my fingers. Eh? And now, that's what he's doing. This marble is absolutely wonderful. Full credit to him. Yes, all the team of, yeah. who cares for you with these things. Yeah. They, there's no, nothing can cure you, like no. I don't know that. No, no. That, that was wonderful therapy for you, being able to do that. Really, you were well, lucky. It was a godsend, wasn't it, well, that you was could a, do that? I was really. determined to do it. So yeah, that's the way I could do it. Yeah. You know, yeah. I've done. That's yeah. the way I yeah. But your hand has healed oh, so much yeah. quicker because of all the manipulation that you've done as well as everything else. And you haven't done so much. <laughs> yeah, but he, he was determined. He's got a determination, my brother. Mm. Wonderful. And it, it's marvellous when you see what he can do now. So, oh, it's unbelievable. Oh, well, if anybody's ever interested, you could always do a class. You I'll never know. Be more, you know. I'll be more than pleased to uh, to show mm. anybody, especially if they're interested, especially my age. You know. No, honestly, I can't tell you how proud I am of him. He's wonderful. He really is. He's wonderful.